Hey, Traders Rogi here. And in this recap video, we're going to cover a lot of the FOMC, the pre FOMC markets that I've got my eye on for tomorrow. Now, when it comes to events like FOMC or ECB or any central bank event, I don't want to step out in front of the narrative too far. In other words, you know, it's it's 6.30 p.m. on Eastern Time Tuesday. I want to see how the market responds throughout Asia and Europe and the UK and how the US markets open up. Probably a little hesitant again, but the three markets that I've got my eye on very closely is gold, the dollar index, and the euro. Now, whether you're looking at the futures version of the euro or whether you want to go the, the Forex version, up to you. But those are the three markets that I've got my eye on. And we're going into this event long euro, short dollars against the Aussie, against the Canadian dollar, against the euro. And I'm also long gold. So I'm looking for a market that's going to likely have already discounted any kind of potential rate hike in December. Now, why is this rate hike narrative coming back around again? Well, part of that is the Fed Fund Futures. Now, a lot of, not a lot of people show traders how to read Fed Fund Futures. That's something we do on a regular basis in the Simpler Forex room, Simpler Futures room. Um, because to understand how to trade Forex and currencies, whether you're playing the Forex markets or Futures, FX, you gotta understand what the FFZ is telling you. And this is probably as hawkish an indication as we have had in some time. And this has only happened over the last four days. Are we looking at a higher expectation for a December rate hike? Yes. Did the dollar even care by rallying today? No. And that's what a lot of people miss about understanding how to discount what central bank, especially the FOMC, is communicating to the market. There's a way to do it. So do I feel as confident as ever about my Euro buy? Absolutely, absolutely. And this is where tomorrow we could see the market follow through. If not, we'll continue to be what I call opportunistic. I'll look for pullback buys on the Aussie US or the AD futures. I'll look for opportunities to buy Canadian dollar versus US. And this one's actually looking pretty ripe for tomorrow. So for those of you that look at CD futures or the US dollar versus Canadian dollar, keep an eye on this one. A, a, wick, a quick wick could give us an opportunity to get long uh, Canadian dollar versus US. Gold, I'm really looking for this market to base off this zone in front of 1300 and head back up. Head back up higher where? You know, let me give you a quick easy tip on trying to on finding initial profit targets. One of the easiest things to do is find what I call the mid-range. In other words, grab just a mid-range here. Is 1335 one of the levels I will watch? Absolutely. So though could be this level based upon the previous Darvis here at about 1331. That's another level that we'll, we can watch to the upside. Um, 1320 will be another one to watch, but that's a really easy way to, to not get too ambitious expecting a 1360 revisit, but rather making sure you're being realistic about where the market could retrace its steps and making sure you're being proactive about an initial profit target. I'd keep an eye on those areas there. Not necessarily all tomorrow, but moving up higher off this corrective long. So super excited about that. What else? I'm very, I'm very bullish. As much as I've talked about exhaustive plays, I am very bullish names like S&P and Dow. And if we get a really decent pullback, when I say decent, it's going to be defined by the 34 EMA on the high and my Darvis tools. Um, I don't mind a pullback buy in the NQ. We'll talk more about that in front of the FOMC tomorrow, but keep an eye on Euro dollar index, and gold. Those are three of my main markets for tomorrow. See you in the next update.